Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Mary MacKillop. If she were alive today, she would be a household name. It's not that she sought the limelight, on the contrary. She simply wanted to serve the poor wherever she found them in her native Australia. But along the way, she managed to arouse the ire of some rather powerful churchmen. One even excommunicated her for a time. She was born in 1842 in Melbourne to parents who emigrated from Scotland. She grew up in a family that faced constant financial struggles, and as a young woman she was drawn to religious life, but couldn't exactly find the order that met her needs. So in 1860 she meets up with Father Julian Woods, who also became her spiritual director. Together they founded a new community of women, the Sisters of St. Joseph of the Sacred Heart, also known as the Josephite Sisters. Its members were to staff schools, especially for poor children, as well as orphanages and do other works of charity. As the congregation grew, so did her problems. Her priest friend proved unreliable in many ways, and his responsibilities for direction of the sisters were removed. Meanwhile, Mary had the support of some local bishops as she and her sisters went about their work. But the bishop in South Australia, aging and relying on others for advice, briefly excommunicated Mary, charging her with disobedience and dispensed fifty of her sisters from their vows. In truth, the bishop's quarrel was about power and who had authority over whom. He ultimately rescinded his order of excommunication. Mary insisted that her congregation should be governed by an elected mother general answerable to Rome, not to the local bishop. There also were disputes about whether or not the congregation could own property. In the end, Rome proved to be Mary's best source of support. After a long wait, official approval of the congregation and how it was to be governed came from good old Pope Leo XIII. Despite her struggles with church authorities, St. Mary and her sisters were able to offer social services that few, if any, government agencies in Australia could. And they served Protestants and Catholics alike. They worked among the Aborigines. They taught in schools and orphanages and served unmarried mothers. Money, actually, the lack of it was a constant worry, but the sisters who begged from door to door were bolstered by faith and by the conviction that their struggles were opportunities to grow closer to God. By the time Mary was approaching the end of her life, the congregation was thriving. She died in 1909 at the age of 67. Pope John Paul II, saint, beatified her in 1995. In 2010, when Pope Benedict XVI canonized her, she became Australia's first saint. Can you believe it? God bless her, Saint Mary named after the Mother of God, the only creature ever to exist on this blessed earth without the slightest touch of sin. Amen.